sitting in the room and just wondering, like, I have some some success. That's that's what I've learned. But working a nine to five for years and years to come is not what I want to do. It's not. Anytime you got to punch in and get paid to do a job, it's still active income where you have to work for it. You need assets, ways to create passive income to where you're making that money and you're not necessarily doing anything. Now, of course, there's going to be some type of work, but the level of stress that comes behind working a nine to five all day long is just, it's not right. And what I learned and kind of looked at at warehouses is in warehouse jobs is literally they remind me of like just hearing stories of like different people I grew up around or people I met. It has like a a weird, like, you know what I'm saying, vibe about it, like just weird jailhouse type vibes. And for those of you who don't know, they have work release programs and things like that. So this is just some things I've learned from some of my friends who uh been through like jail and things like that when I was growing up in Charlotte, North Carolina. It would tell me like it's kind of favors like the prison like though he was saying like how the walls is up high the windows is like at the top of the building you barely can see in you can't see in them and you barely can see out of them so it's it was just like on a deeper level like that what i learned he was just playing like to look up and see you know, the sky, the stars, whenever you're working, whatever the case may be, it look like a dream or a goal that can't be obtained or achieved, like you don't know how to get out. And it makes so much sense because I looked at the movie Batman and how he put him in a cave. Like, you know, Bane beat up Batman and then he threw him down the hole where nobody can escape. Now the thing is, it's more psychological than it is physical. Like you just thinking one way, one direction. And that's kind of what I learned from Growing up in Charlotte, North Carolina, like being in the big city, the buildings are up high, everything moves fast paced. You have no time to sit back and think and reflect on anything. And the thing is, out here in Kansas, I'm going at my own pace. I'm moving very slow, taking my time with everything. But the more I sit out here and compare it to when I was at home in Charlotte, I realized you have enough time. You have all the time in the world. Like for me, waking up early in the morning, five to six in the morning, going to a warehouse job, things like that, just didn't work for me. And now here I am waking up at 11 o'clock, 10.45 to work a job. 
Now the thing is, I'm never tired of things like that when I'm done working. I have to get up early in the morning and sit on the side of my bed and wonder, figure out if I want to still keep this job or keep working it. You know, nothing like that. I just know how to find a job that fits me. I'm talking to people really fits me. Uh, you know, I'll be sitting here talking with some of my friends. That I hang with. And the ones who listen, you know, they mold, they help guide and, you know, shape me. But at the same time, I can tell, like, like I see the change in certain people in my life, my friends, my family. And the thing is, you could be someone else's comfort zone. You could be someone else's crutch. So you not elevating, you not growing, can affect or potentially harm the people around you that are right there with you, like friends, family, everything. It doesn't necessarily benefit them. And the best teacher, the best uh, room for growth is always when you're alone. Always when you're literally sitting back with nothing but just your thoughts and yourself. And when I say nothing, I mean being nowhere. Because what I was reading about or heard about on the audio thing is when it's all said and done, you have to be accountable. You have to check yourself. Now, Everybody says you have to give an account to God, things like that, when you're when you're passing on. Okay, when you pass away, when you die. Now, my philosophy on that is we are made in the image of God. God is the creator, okay? And how you view yourself is how you view God. If we are created in the same image, where do we get our image from? Our mind. Where do we create image from our thoughts? Creativity, how you want to do hair, how you want to play sports. Shoot, it could even be how I wash cars. It could be like from any point of view, any perspective. And the thing is, that's how you create. That's how you create. And being in the city, fast paced, it doesn't give you time for creativity. You create the most when you have ample amount of time with nothing to do. You find ways to get creative. Think about it as a kid growing up. Look at how these things took away the things that we naturally used to do. You put a bunch of kids at a playground. And just leave them, like, just let them play around. In the middle of nothing, they become creative. They figure out ways to elevate. And the things is, is that, that reminds me, I just had a thought about when I was a teacher at the elementary school. I was a teacher at an elementary school. And I remember like a specific teacher I won't say his name or anything like that he was a great role model he was a good guy he was a good man he was I remember this one time we had a room full of uh, just all boys it was all boys in one classroom and He was just giving them the game, just schooling them on real life and school life. Like, how you got to use school for your benefit, to your benefit. Don't let school, don't let life be 
use you. And the thing is, I learned. I'm sitting there listening to that boy, the boy's different point of views and ideas, and it's just like, You know, history repeats itself. And that's with great things, good things, even things that we uh, lack. But there's still room for growth in anything. You just have to find that right way to grow, elevate. And see, I remember, like, talking to them kids. And it wasn't no scripted type of talk. You know, we got straight to the point with the uh, with the young boys and was just explaining to them like you have to and remind you, I remember that whole day sitting in the classroom it was sitting in the classroom we had a bunch of windows yo this this is this is just amazing like the thoughts I'm having about like school and even going back to when I was in school as a kid I remember you know, you know, classrooms, okay, like the classrooms I had growing up, the windows was right there at the kids' eye level. So when the kids are doing work, they look out that window and get that creative idea. And I just remember, like, all the schools had giant windows, like where I was at, you know, you could see in and out of the whole world. And this, these type of things matter to how you create a peace and a tranquil a tranquil vibe for students in the classroom and there's a point in life if you don't understand or use your creativity life takes that away it takes it away this is what I like about being around my dad my dad is very like open minded he's very creative he always has thoughts about different things he sees oh man if I do it like this I can my dad spends a lot of time alone in solitude and you know he sits in his room he thinks he's meditating he reads he writes and he has all the ideas and he puts a lot of them into action and so my sister's crazy my dad had a great he had a good a good and bad balance that was like sometimes like the way he go about things and push me was a test to see if I'm was to see if I'm ready for the real world. My dad is literally a representation of what the real world is like. And the real world the real world can be portrayed or perceived differently depending on where you come from. This is why I don't get upset with friends and family. I stay patient. And as you understand, patience mixed with not saying anything at all, not reacting to anything at all, it disturbs people. People want to disturb that about you because that is where they're trying to get themselves. They're trying to get peace. They're trying to get rest. So how do you do that? Like what I did, I gave like, See, this is what happens when you're the one who's peaceful, calm, relaxed, things like that. There are a lot of things that try to take advantage of you in this world, whether that's your own mind, your physicality, your mental, your spirit, your finances. That could be, it starts with you. Then after that, how you portray yourself, going back to God, the creator, that's how the rest of the world perceives you and portrays you. So what happens is, They start trying to steal your light, trying to take away from you based on how they feel about themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know it. Some people are uncomfortable with you telling them. You don't got to tell them. And it's crazy about, it's not crazy because the light, the sun, things that you look up to, what you look up to, certain people look up to you out here. Okay, certain people look up to you and it it's a reason for that. And this is the thing. When you know you're the one in your family that's elevated, you got a heightened sense of things. Like everything when people are around you, think about it. There are some of us in our family where 
if we're not around, they can't get along. If we're not around with our friends, they can't get along. There are certain people like this. And the thing is, you show people a little bit of that and remove yourself a little bit. When you remove yourself, it gives people time to think about what impact did this person have. And so that that reminds me of like different reader, different uh influences around the world, motivational speakers, like the different people you have around you in the world determines and dictates themselves because they're looking up at something. You can look up at something that's bad as well. So whether or not you think what you're doing or how you're feeling doesn't affect others, it does because everybody's paying attention to each other. Look at how guarded we are in the world, especially in the cities. We're covered up, we're protected 24 seven, we're on edge, ready for anything. That could be friends, that could be family, that could be our own personal lives, that could be our own selves. We're on guard with ourselves, even in our relationships, our finances, everything's guarded when you're supposed to just let things flow freely. And I'm learning these things as I go. Slowly but surely, it'll all come together. But it just takes me back to that picture and that image. I wish I had somebody who can draw. Because I would draw that image of all those boys sitting in the classroom. And the thing is, what I'm saying is, they also had a classroom where the female teachers would sit with the girls. And it wasn't anything about school. It was just time to let's have, you know, they was in there having girl talk, okay? And then there were some times when the male teacher, he was sitting there with the boys and have just guy talk, talk about girls, talk about family, their goals, their families and parents, like everything. And then they would switch for a brief moment. Let the teacher, the male teacher, talk to the female women about their point of view and perspective of life, the world, men. And I quit, you know, I quit this job. I left that job and things like that. Now, the thing is, I was getting back to, like, your light. People can use your light. Think about it. People out here have dark paths in their life, dark paths in their heart. Now, if you look, but think about it. Think about it when you walk a trail and you look back without your iPhone. What looks scarier? What's in front of you or what's behind you? Think about that. So people see where they once was and get scared, fear of not wanting to go back to that. So instead of creating their own light, they use others' light to move forward and what happens when people take light away from what you're doing it creates a darkness for you so you have to remove yourself you have to remove yourself and people notice when you remove yourself it makes them check what they did you know like, I just sat here and think, thought about my father. The hug my father gave me. It made me weak. Because I had to get on the plane and I had to move away from my father and things like that. I don't know if y'all understand that, but the feeling of leaving home on a Greyhound on the airplane, I remember these different incidences. Like, I remember when... I first left home, my parents sitting there looking at, I'm looking out the Greyhound window with one book bag. My mom and dad hugged up on each other, just looking and waving. To let your son or daughter go into the real world by themselves is scary. Because now you're on your own and you have to learn. And this is part of the reason why I don't believe in relationships. I don't really believe in people of younger culture looking for girlfriends, love, attention, boyfriends, whatever it is you like, because 
it doesn't teach you to rely on yourself. It teaches you to rely on others a lot. The wrong relationships. You know? In my community, things get super hard and we help each other out so much. We forget to help ourselves, take breaks for ourselves. And what happens when you take a break for yourself and get yourself right? The people that are from or supposed to be from the same environment as you, culture and everything, they try to destroy or make you feel bad about you going a different way than them. Now, they have that same light. I feel like everyone on this planet Earth has had the right thinking and the right time, right timing to choose a path that could benefit them, but they chose to ignore it. So this is what I believe, like with the Bible, when it says you have to answer to God. You're answering to yourself every single day. You don't correct something every single day. You don't fix something about yourself. But you can't get there unless you figure out who you are. I'm starting to get out of the phase of cracking jokes to my friends. The jokes does, don't hurt me because I know who I am. But when I spit jokes out back at them, I know it makes them feel certain type of ways. And I'm not really for that, you know. So I um, try to remove myself from it. Now, what I've been trying to figure out is this, this is what's tying back to the whole beginning of this uh, video. How do you reach friends and family the right way? To where the light can switch on for them and they have a sense of direction. I say this before and I'll keep saying it. Nature, going out to take walks in nature, heals you. I remember my uh, my nephew. I remember my nephew, little KJ. I remember my little cousin, my baby cousin, King. King and KJ, I wish them two would have met each other. S Taking the kids outside when they're having a cranky time inside, think about it. Friends and family, you're just inside the house all day. The way you vibe, the way you move, it's, it's jacked up. I used to be the same way in the room full of darkness. Didn't do nothing but just go to sleep every day. For a year and a half straight, all I did was go to sleep. I was messed up off not playing sports anymore. Same with my uh, my nephew and my cousin. I'm watching them. How they behave in the house, cranky, crying all the time. And then when I take them outside, I hold them in my arm. I push them in the stroller, looking up at the sun. Relaxed, calm. I think there's a reason for everything. I truly believe it's a reason for these little moments. And me as a person, I hope that the small impact I had on my nephew and my baby cousin, it'll grow into something great. And I'm sitting here thinking about from that point of being a baby, we all start off as being innocent to the point where I'm looking at my classrooms and I see a classroom full of of young young men coming from birth like to that. And then the next step is middle school, high school, college. And based off some of the things my brother told me, my little brother, he'd be like, yo, you ever wonder like, you remember, he, he'd be like, you remember those guys that we grew up with, bro? You remember those dudes we used to play football, basketball with, walk around the neighborhoods with? I'm like, yeah, what about them? He'd tell me. He's like, bro, they all in prison, bro. They had me feeling crazy. The reason I say this is because my brother was in prison. My brother sat in prison. And he'd be like, Kev, yeah, everybody we used to play sports with, everybody we used to hang out with, everybody we was doing this and this and this with, you remember, bro, over there at that gym that we went to? We ain't know him, but he was hooping at Bro, he in jail, bro. He's dead. He has this. Like, life come at you fast. And this is the thing I thought about when I'm seeing a group of, seeing a group of young guys in the classroom. I'm just like, 
that was a special moment when that teacher was sitting there talking to him. And I respect certain movies so much, Boys in the Hood, Higher Learning, uh, Menace to Society. All these movies, they had somebody in the movie trying to teach and get a message out to the young kids that this is not the way to go. And that's literally what my father, man, look, y'all. I got love for my friends around me and for my father. My dad really used to have his house open arms to any and every boy that wanted to come through there. You see, it bothered my mom. She couldn't understand it. Having a garage full of uh, just guys just chilling, shooting hoops, drinking, smoking, whatever the case may be, just having a good time. My dad a grill, cook some food, and he have a house full of young men just talking to him, trying to educate them, trying to teach them certain things. I just went home to South Carolina to talk to my dad. He has two or three guys out there working, including my brother, and it was just like, man. See, sometimes you can be out of date with the way the world operates and things like that. And, you know, your message can't get through to the ones that you're trying to reach. So that's why I was saying, like, how do you get through to people around you that don't understand? It's through patience, through time, and through waiting. You'll find that gap. You'll find that pocket. And sometimes it's not saying anything at all. It's just showing yourself. I came home for two weeks. Talked to my mom, talked to my brother. I remember I wrote, I wrote my brother for six, seven hours to go get his son. And we talked about a lot of things, man. I got love for my uh, brother, man. Even my best friend, uh, Demontre Crawford, he's one of my best friends. I told him, I was like, bro, your brother's taking another journey, another step. And I told him that, I was like, bro, I thank his, I thanked his mom for what she did. She hustled. She was a hustler, legally, getting the money right. And I seen him, like, I remember one time my friend, he in the room, just different things, like how he was brought up, and I'm looking at I'm just like, Man, look, my dog Adrian, my dog Nigel, Cyrus, Slink, like these group of friends is what I remember. And I remember, remember, I remember the guys that I grew up around that wasn't no good for me because they also taught me something too. That we, that the community I'm talking about, the community I'm from, we were all just like that, outside all day, lost. And the things is, for people to understand your message, sometimes you can't go into their environment and try to explain to them. You have to bring people to your environment. You have to bring people to where you're at. And these are the things that I've been working towards, but I want it to happen faster, you know? It needs to happen quicker. And those are the things that I'm trying to figure out and learn.